The budget constraint is the first piece of the utility maximization framework, and it describes all of the combinations of goods and services that the consumer can afford. In reality, there are many goods and services to choose from, but economists limit discussion to two goods at a time for graphical simplicity. In this example, we'll use beer and pizza as the two goods in question. Quantity of beer is on the vertical axis, or the y-axis, and quantity of pizza is on the horizontal axis, or the x-axis. It doesn't really matter which good we put where, because this is sort of an arbitrary decision, but it is important that we keep these consistent throughout our utility maximization analysis and we don't switch them without thinking. The mathematical intuition behind the budget constraint is most easily explained via an example. So here, let's say that the price of beer is $2 per can or whatever, and the price of pizza is $3, let's say, per slice. And our total income over the period of time that we're optimizing over, or that we're considering, is $18. So then we can think about, first of all, we can think about our total spend on beer and our total spend on pizza. Well, if each can of beer costs $2, then our spending on beer is just two times however many cans of beer we're consuming. So we can just call this 2B where B is the quantity of beer. Similarly, we can think about our spend on pizza. Well, our spending on pizza is just $3 times however many slices of pizza we're consuming. So we can just say that this is 3P, in which case our total spend on those two goods together, not surprisingly, is just 2B plus 3p. So if we were going to think about our budget constraint, well, intuitively speaking, our budget constraint is that we can't spend more than we have, or in mathematical terms, what we're spending has to be less than or equal to our income. So we can say in this situation here that our budget constraint is that 2b plus 3p has to be less than or equal to 18. In order to think about the budget constraint graphically, it's helpful to graph the boundary of the budget constraint, or in other words, the points where our total spend is exactly equal to our income. So we want to graph the line 2b plus 3p equals 18. And you'll notice here, because pizza is the quantity on the x-axis and beer is the quantity on the y-axis, this just simplifies to graphing the line 2y plus 3x equals 18. So one way we could go about doing this is to just solve for y using, you know, use the algebra concepts that we learned in high school or whatever to figure out what this line has to look like. Alternatively, we could just think about what the endpoints of the line have to be and then plot the line from there. So for example, if we were going to take that approach, we could ask ourselves, well, if we're buying only beer, what's the maximum quantity of beer that we could buy? So here, if we're buying only beer, then 2B is going to equal 18, and we can say, well, we can buy a maximum of nine cans of beer. So we can represent that as one of the endpoints on our budget constraint. We can say, well, if we are not considering buying any pizza, we're going to be over here on the pizza axis. That means we can buy nine cans of beer. So we could put a point on our budget constraint right here, and you notice this is the point zero 0,9 for zero slices of pizza and nine cans of beer. We could also think about the other end of our budget constraint. We could say, well, in that case, let's consider what happens if we're only consuming pizza. So in that case, we're not going to be consuming any beer, and we're going to be spending all of our $18 on pizza. So if we're spending all of our $18 on pizza, we'll be able to buy six slices of pizza. So we can put that, well, zero on the, be on the beer axis is down here, and then we go out to six on the pizza axis, and we get somewhere here. And you'll notice that this guy here is the point 
six, zero. And the last thing we notice is that we know that this equation defines a line on our graph. So we know that any two points completely define a line. So we can continue making our budget constraint by just connecting the dots here. And we notice that although our line technically continues forever in both directions, it only makes sense to, to consider non-negative quantities of pizza and of beer, so we really only draw this part here. As we said before, the budget constraint technically represents all of the combinations of the two goods where we're spending less than or equal to our income. And then the line that we graphed here was the set of points where we were spending all of our income. So it's worth thinking about what the areas on the different sides of this line represent. If we look out here, anything outside of this budget line are the set of points that the consumer can't afford. Because what you'll notice is that this is the set of points where the consumer is consuming more of both of the items. And if the consumer is spending all of her money at this point here, she's not going to be able to afford to increase her consumption without having to decrease the consumption of something else. On the other hand, the points that are strictly inside this budget line are the points where the consumer is not spending all of her income. Because we can notice that the points inside are the ones where she's consuming less than she would be if she was spending all of her money.